Alright, so, uh... The chat has been talking about attack reels and how strong it is all game. So, uh, let's give it a... We're cow give it a show so... The peeps at home can see how ridiculously strong it is. Ah, here we go! It's not, like, broken strong until you get to super post-game when everyone's doing max damage. And that's where it's, like, insane. Normally, it's really strong, but not, you know... It's balanced, but yeah, it's, it's really strong. If you get the right thing, it's really strong. Now, having said that, if you get the item required for Trio of Nines... Which, by the way, I don't think we ever actually explained what it does. There's a mix with Riku, which, like I said, is not that hard to get if you know where to look. You can get it the first time you come to Calmlands, I believe. Uh, it makes everything do 9,999 damage. Every attack you do. Like, you could attack with Yuna, and she does 9,999 damage. So if you do that, and then do Waka's attack reels, you can one-shot every boss in the game easily. Even the final boss, pretty sure it's like one or two shot on a boss. This is why it's so strong. It does like, what, 12 hits? If you get the perfect 2-2-2. Two, two, two. So 12 times 9,999, you can see how strong that gets. And also, that was with my catcher weapon with no buff, and they were doing like 4k a hit. So you can imagine how strong it gets even early on, even without Trio. Okay. So what do we want to do next? Maybe the mirror. Since we already have two ultimate weapons ready to get. Just gotta go get the mirror. <coughs> We're counting on you. We're counting on you, kid. So let's see if I remember how this works. Because there are a few steps to it. Here we go! Um, so this is how the Alton weapons work in this game. Um, you need to first get the Cloudy Mirror, which we already got from the Chocobo race thing. You don't have to do any chests, you just have to win the race. Also, there's this chest that you can get after Classical Run. Uh, Classical Leaves. Um... I'm not going to put on no encounters because we actually need to go capture some stuff here while we're doing it. So first you have to get the Cloudy Mirror. Then you have to go talk to a random NPC. So they tried to make this kind of like out there so you wouldn't find it until post-game. But you can very easily go do this at any time after like Calm Lands, I think. And uh, I forget if there's anything over here. I don't think so. And... Uh, already be doing crazy stuff like one-shotting the final boss because the ultimate weapons are very strong. I think this is the path, right? Yeah, but we can't go there yet. Gotta talk to the NPC first. We can do the stupid butterfly game while we're here, too. We did the first one. I don't think we did the second one yet, right? You 
you love the butterfly game? That's an opinion. <laughs> Haven't heard that one. Seems like everyone hates it. No, I haven't grabbed any of the other spheres, which I was going to mention that because I don't really care too much about Orin's overdrives, but his third overdrive is really nice to have. So I would like to get that one at least. Farewell. Farewell. The final one is Tornado. The third one is Banishing Blade, which is very, very useful. Because it does something that nothing else in the game does, and that's uh, all four of the break abilities in one shot. So it gives Power Break, Mental Break, Magic Break, and Armor Break all in one shot, which nothing else in the game can do that. You have to use them all individually. So it's actually a pretty nice overdrive to have, just because it's something different. Didn't I already do this one, or no? Is this the one I did? I don't remember how the butterfly thing works. It does your taxes. It's very useful. Yeah. It does my taxes. Farewell. A billion dollars? I have two dollars for coffee. Yeah. Oh, really? It's a hundred percent chance. That's dope. I didn't know that. That's so cool. Yeah, it's. I've always really liked Vanish. I remember using it even when I had Tornado. Because Tornado is just damage. I think. Can Tornado also eat enemies? I don't remember. Yeah. I want to say it can. Yeah, no, I might not even bother with like every single sigil for every single uh, character just because I'm not going to use them. I mean, I guess just to be complete, we could, but you've already seen what the butterfly game looks like. The other one is just the same. Uh, we'll decide later. I want to do everything in the game that is unique and interesting, but at the same time, I don't want this playthrough to be a million years. And if we already did one of the butterfly games, I don't really need to do another one. I'll definitely get the weapons, yeah. Cause they have like their own unique like little animation that plays when you get them, which is cool. But like I don't think I'm gonna use Kamari's ultimate weapon, so I don't think we really need the sigil for it. We got all the sigils in the platinum playthrough, so we'll do that a little bit ago. And a nice variety of enemies here. So that's kind of cool how you can see the path here that opened up. It does give you a, um, a hint about this. So when you come back to this area, that path opens up and when you go up there, it like shows a big plant thing. 
and I think the kid is already there. And he's like, I'm looking for my parents. So like, there is like a bit of a hint as to what you're supposed to do for this. It's not like completely blind. Okay, wait. So no, I don't think the kid is up there yet, because you have to talk to her first. And they're like, where's my dad? Nice, we got a sphere. And then we have to go talk to the dad, which I think is by the lake. But first, check sphere. Who are you? You are the one they call Jekt. The man from Xanarkand, are you not? What of it? Watch your tongue, Knave. Please, Orin, calm down. Ah, oh, my apologies. I am Braska, a summoner. I've come to take you from this place. Sounds sweet. What's the catch? <laughs> that easy to see, was it? I soon leave on a pilgrimage to Xanarkand. Seriously? Hmm. I would like you to join us. It will be a dangerous trip. Yet, if we do reach Xanarkand, my prayers will be answered, and you will be able to go home. We think. What say you? Great, let's go. Hmm. So quick? Anything to get out of here. Then it's settled. But I must protest. This drunkard, a guardian? Hey! You want to step in here and say that? What does it matter? No one truly believes that I, a fallen summoner wed to an Albed, could possibly defeat Sin. This is what they say. No one expects us to succeed. Braska, sir. <laughs> Let's show them they're wrong. A fallen summoner, a man from Xanarkand, and a warrior monk doomed to obscurity for refusing the hand of the priest's daughter. What delightful irony it would be if we defeated Sin. Stop gabbing and get me out of here. <laughs> Free at last. So who's recording this, by the way? Now, Jekt. I am in your hands until we reach Xanarkand. Right, right. So, what's a summoner anyway? A summoner. What's a summoner? Nice, we got Banishing Blade. Really cool, like, little backstory there with, uh, especially Orin. I actually like that sphere a lot. It's interesting. Um. It's really cool, like, you don't really hear too much about how Braska wasn't, no one thought he would succeed. They, you just kind of hear about, like, oh my god, he was the greatest. He's, like, celebrated throughout the whole game. So it's cool to know that, like, he was also kind of like Yuna halfway through her journey. Like, at the beginning, everyone just, you know, gives Yuna all the credit because she's Braska's daughter, but then after that, when she's, like, exiled, she kind of follows more in her dad's footsteps. And yeah, that's probably why Orin followed Braska in particular, because he was already, like, in outs with Yevon, so it made sense to go with Braska. Interesting. Oh, wrong way. Hello. This is a cutscene, isn't it? Hold there. This bridge is closed. Bavel is off limits by the temple's decree. No one may enter. Huh? Everyone's in mourning since Maester Micah died. 
And it's been morning for days now. <laughs> Passe. At least that's what they say. The temple's falling apart with all four maesters gone. They're afraid of riots, so they're turning everyone away. With our brother in the middle. What's up with Isaru? They came crying to him to stay in Bavel, to protect the temple and all that. And you know our brother. It's not in him to refuse. Oh, I guess our pilgrimage is done then, huh? Of course not. Jeez. Long story short, you'll only find trouble in Bavel. I'd stay out for your own safety. Oh, going anyways. Isaru sends his regards to Lady Yuna. And he says he's sorry too. That whole bit about Yuna being a traitor is just some Albed rumor I hear. I just can't believe it. I mean, the Albed helped us out. That's right, Marota, you tell him. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. I don't think there's anything here either other than the save point. And... Oh, there is a chest here. Confused. Confused ward is useful, so... Anyways, here's the dad. <laughs> Hope you find him. Thanks, kid. Some random guados. You are a blitzball player? There's something I must tell you. I'd like to apologize on behalf of the guado. We are responsible for the fiends that attacked the stadium after the game. We're sorry for the disturbance and for disrupting such a wonderful game. Please accept our apologies. That's really cool. I love these little lore tidbits about earlier events that is completely optional for you to find. <laughs> Luca was an inside job. So now the husband's back with the kids missing. And now we take the rainbow road. Still missing something. I don't remember this person being there. Yeah, I might have just had to roll more dialogue. I hate when games do this, like, I talk to the person, but I have to talk to them again. Yeah, I think that's all you have to do. We have to do that. It's not like you have any clue as to that's what you did wrong because it's not like this woman says anything about the kid. So here we go. Oh, you need the cloudy mirror for this. I wonder what it could be. Found my dad. Thanks a bunch. How'd you guys get here? <laughs> so now you have to go get the actual weapons and then come back here. So it's a very like out of the way task, but I mean it makes sense. It is the ultimate weapons. But once you do, like, like the sigils are the ones that are hard, so there's, each weapon has a crest and a sigil, 
and the crest makes the weapon like slightly better and then the sigil and the crest make it the ultimate weapon um, the sigils are always the ones that have some kind of like challenge like the chocobo game or the butterfly game or beating all the aeons in the temple or whatever um, but like none of them are really like bosses or anything you have to do other than maybe the aeons but they're all kind of just like minigame stuff, so it's kind of weird that like all you really have to do is this quest and then like minigame stuff and you can get the strongest stuff in the game. But that's the way they chose to do it, I guess. Count none. And you definitely need to like do a lot of exploring before you'd ever figure this out normally. So right now we have the crest and the sigil for Yuna's weapon and Titus's weapon. Just so happens that both Yuna and Titus's weapons are both in the calm mode. So we can grab them both. Yeah, one of the sigils, I believe it's Orin's is Monster Arena based. I forget what it is. I think it's like captured 10 enemies in three areas or something. Like all at, like 10 of each enemy in like three areas, I think, is what gets you his sigil. Something like that. Titus's ultimate weapon is just randomly chilling down here. Uh, I don't remember how to... Get this guy to move. What is that noise? Is that a Chocobo like walking into the wall or something? Why does it sound like he's not moving? I thought you just needed the mirror. I think maybe you have to hmm. talk to the Chocobo guy. Or maybe you have to do like a random race. Yeah, I think I think that's what it is. I think you have to do a race and win. And then come here like without leaving the call or something like that. Like I already did the race and won. But uh I left, so I think that resets it. Nice. I was like, I think this is a Malbro. Even for post game, it takes us five hits to kill. Have we heard anything about that? Because I don't imagine they would. But I would be completely over the moon if they added trophies to PS1 games. I suppose if they released them like slowly over time, they could do that. But if they're making them all available right away, then they're not. From what I read, it sounded like they were making them all available right away because they said any port that you own, you can play, even without PS Plus. But, uh, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. If they gave, like, old PlayStation 1 games trophies, I mean, they already have with, like, PS, the Final Fantasy VII, Final Fantasy VIII, Final Fantasy IX, like, ports have trophies. And then, like, random games like Wild Arms 3 got, like, a PS3 release, not a port, and that had trophies. And some other games, too. <laughs> Star Sleep trophies, let's go. That'd be funny. Your best time so far is zero. Oh. Not like these. 
these placements. You. You. I guess they'll win. Oh, yeah. Wait, you do hold the record. <laughs> Should be gone. You just have to win a race. Yep. And here it is, just sitting here. Titus's weapon, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it technically has to be less than 0, 0.0. It has to be negative point one to count. Yeah, I'm not sure why they didn't call it Ultima Blade. That would have been cool. Also, if there were ever a chance for us to see Penance, it would be right here. Because that's like where he comes from. He comes from like behind the Calm Lands. On the, the EU version, you should be able to like see part of them poking out or something. That'd be dope. Dude, what if unlocking Titus's ultimate weapon is what, like, caused Penance to spawn? What if that was, like, the lock on Penance, and once you unlock that, he, like, it's unlocked. Deep lore. I was just saying how cool it would be if you could see him. Time to time to start a rumor. Somebody like Photoshop a piece of Penance's head right there and then like post it on Reddit. Everyone will believe it. Did you guys know you can see Pennant from where you grab Titus's ultimate weapon? <laughs> you just have to view the Titus laughing scene 3,000 times and then he shows up. Here's Yunus. She's like, oh boy, cool. So anyways. Did you guys know that Yuna is a Nirvana fan? It's her favorite band.
I mean, they are teenagers, so... It smells like Team Spirit kind of fits. So, if you go to equip the ultimate weapons right now... They just have no AP and that's it. Gotta give them the juice. Smells like Team Spira. Right. Titus is the baby on the cover. That's Besaid Island when he falls in the water. That's why they call him a crybaby. Oh my god. So yeah, you just walk up to this random plant and you're like, can I have the best things in the game? And he's like, okay. It's kind of weird, but hey. Like, what even is this thing? It doesn't even look like it's... Like, the model is correct. It looks like it's been cut off a bit. Nirvana looks pretty cool, too. Honestly, I think Yuna's starting weapon is my favorite version of her weapon, though. Big circle. So now that they have the crests, they get double overdrive, which is pretty good. Uh, but still no AP and nothing else to write home about. But now... The sauce. Why is Titus doing a dance? Stop that. Why are you doing that? <laughs> I don't remember him doing that. was that? I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos. He's <laughs> shifting into maximum overdrive. Now... Boom. Break damage limit, triple overdrive, evade encounter, magic counter. And by the way, we have not talked about evade encounter yet. Uh, anyone want to explain in the chat why evade encounter is complete nonsense? <laughs> More like evade and win. Uh, yeah. Long story short, any enemy that does physical attacks, you cannot lose. It is not, hey, sometimes you evade and then you counter. Or, hey, anytime you do evade, you counter. No, it is every single time you get attacked, you always evade and you always counter. So as long as it's not a magic attack, you are invincible. It's pretty silly. And magic counter always counters magic, but you do still get hit by the magic. So you're not completely invincible with this, but yeah, if it's a if it's an enemy that doesn't do magic attacks, Titus cannot die. It's pretty silly. And then we have Break Damage Limit, Triple Overdrive, Double AP, one MP cost. Unfortunately, double AP is pretty lame. You don't really want that on an ultimate weapon. You want that on, like, a grind weapon. But 1 MP is dope. Um, also, triple overdrive on Yuna isn't really that useful, in my opinion. So, Yuna is definitely one of those that you can make a better ultimate weapon for. 
pretty easily. Uh, once we get all the items from the monster arena, I'll probably try to make her a better weapon. Um, like 1 MP cost, magic plus 20, or even like alchemy or uh, auto med or stuff like that. Or actually, I think auto med is on armor. Um, yeah, not to mention, I think there's actually a triple AP. There's only double AP. Uh, magic boost. Magic boost 1 MP cost is like This certainly is not a bad weapon, it's awesome, but yeah, you can, for like super post game, you can make a better one. But for just uh, exploring the rest of the game, having that double AP at all times is really dope. Yep, every magic spell costs one MP. So basically, you don't run out of MP anymore. <laughs> and if you have magic booster, magic booster makes your MP costs greater. Um, well, it doubles them actually, but makes them more effective. And the way it works in this game is the one MP cost goes first, and the double MP cost comes after, so everything costs two. Too bad it doesn't do the double first, because then they'd cost one, but I mean, <laughs> two is still, you're never gonna run out. I know, right? Refund. Refund needed. Uh, also, we are very close to getting auto life with Yuna, which the whole thing with auto life is it brings you back to life for free, but it costs like a lot of MP to do so. So with one MP, it's uh, pretty good. All right, what do we want to do next? Uh, and we'll just capture stuff on the way. Gotta capture stuff anyways. Time to dodge 200 lightning bolts. Let's go. Should unpause alerts for post game. I gotta pause them for a little bit. Sid isn't dead yet. Dude, go kill him. Here to kill chaos. Pretty good. Farewell. No, that was the previous Fortnite joke. We already did it. Don't worry. Never would I ever witness two Fortnite jokes in one stream. I'd 
just have to delete the VOD at that point. Yeah, that's Donald Duck from Kingdom Hearts. I don't think he shows up in any other media, just Kingdom Hearts. Fireworks, yeah? I heard you. What does Orin have to drink with his breakfast? Orin juice. Well, I'll have to call you out on that one. I don't think Orin is close enough to orange. <laughs> I picked it up, but I don't think... That's a stretch. Still better than Fortnite jokes? True. I will take a bad Final Fantasy pun for a Fortnite joke any day. Best thing about going back and capturing stuff is listening to all the area themes again. I wonder what crests we're missing. The crests are just sitting around. You just have to go get them. I have three of them. I don't wonder where the other ones are. I'll have to look them up. I don't even remember. Oh, you know what? I know... I'm pretty sure one of them is from the airship codes. Maybe even two. Or from the airship codes. So those make sense as to why I missed them. What did the floor say to the stairs? What's up? Trust you, you're always up to something. I suppose. Yeah, I'm trying to decide when I want to do. I think I want to do it now, actually. The Omega Dungeon, because I don't want to get too strong for it. So it's still a challenge. Then again, it's never really that much of a challenge in my memory. So maybe we should do it now. As well finish what I started here though. Dark Aeons. Uh, if you do the Lulu date, they never appear. It's a Easter egg. Take that, ground. This is like the weirdest statue ever. It's just like the, the upper torso of that behemoth. So I wanted to do this one because, first of all, it's the Mazamoon, and that's dope. And second of all, if we're going to do monster catching, then we'll already have the weapon ready for when we get his sigil. Yeah, the Mazamoon's dope. And he even tries it out. It's like I approve. Oh, yeah. Riku's is in the desert. I didn't really explore the desert too much when I went there. We will when we monster capture. Yeah. 
I don't know if I'm gonna take the time to do this stupid back bar thing though. I also don't remember. I don't know what Riku's ultimate weapon does. I want to say it has alchemy on it. Something else weird like first strike or something. I don't remember hers being Fair that great. Then again, what would you put on it? She doesn't really use her weapons. Oh yeah, it has freaking. Does it have like Gillian Air and Master Thief? Which Master Thief is cool, but really strange abilities to have on an ultimate weapon. But again, like she doesn't really use her weapon, so it's not like she needs anything on it. All Riku needs is an armor with auto haste. So she wins the whole universe. Auto haste and auto med, and I'm happy. And alchemy is nice on her. But, like, there's so much that gets kind of like cancelled by the monster arena. Yo, Majestic, think of the 10 months. There's so much that gets, like, cancelled by the Monster Arena because, like, you spend all this time getting, like, alchemy and owlbed potions and stuff, and then I'm pretty sure one of the Monster Arena rewards is, like, 50 Mega Elixirs. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> all that's useless now, just throw Mega Elixirs. Okay. You're counting. Time for some fun. Check this out. This is so much fun. On the Mia and Ruins. On the Sands. On the Omega Ruins. Found something else. Battlesite, Sands, Ruins. Oh god. Sorry, my desk is falling apart. Captain Bosch von Rotzenberg of Dalmaska. Don't, Don't listen, listen to Andor's lies. lies. Okay, wait, so we got... We already did... The Temple. For Anima. And then we got... Uh... The Desert. I think the Besaid is the only one we're missing. Which... Besaid is... Oh god, why, why did the screen do that? There it is. <laughs> I just randomly moved the cursor and got it. Alright, let's see what all these are. Here we go! Here we go. Check this out. That's it. How did the airship land there? I don't know. Magic counter and evade encounter. Wow. Basically. <laughs> Titus's ultimate weapon with less steps. 
You're counting on. I was about to say the word Titus, and you somehow timed it perfectly and got the laugh out of like the 30 things it can be. I don't understand how you guys do this. Yeah, here we go. Nailed it. I know. Thank you. Moving on. How do? You... I'm just gonna stop talking. Look at this one. This is like something you'd see in like a platformer or something like in the background. So, I'm Captain Bosch von Ronsenberg of Dalmaska. Don't listen to Ondor's lies. Sonar has initiative, which is actually really useful. You're counting. For a couple things. So that's nice. Yeah, here we go! Da, 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 da. I'm gonna be honest, the Phantom Bangle isn't that exciting, but okay. I mean, it is pretty good. Ice heater, fire heater, water heater. I fell asleep and now I'm subscribed. That isn't the most 4 live thing I've heard in a while. Here we go! I love this cool camera angle. You can get real close and personal with Titus. Can't have nice things. Get the the Ascalon, the Askelon. Stay away from the summoner. Stay away from the summoner. Oh, what this is! I thought it was a. Uh... Oh, I thought it was a Riku weapon. Double AP. All right, here we go. This is something new. I'm turning off alerts. Taking away your toy. Uh, yeah, here we go. 